All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't going to do another episode this week, but fuck it. Ah, shit. Here we go again. Where the fuck's the remote? Fuck off, cat. On the escarpment. Check him out. Have a look at him. What a spectacular animal. The thing I've learnt many, many years ago is how keen their eyesight is. So what we'll have to do is, I'm not going to look him right in the eye. Let's just see if we can sneak over. The bounce is good for him. He's got a double. Just get over there. Oh, intercepted here by Adam Reynolds. He's good. He gets the ball down. He's big enough that I won't represent a predator. As long as I don't look him in the eye, just keep my profile low, we should be able to get nice and close. Getting close to wildlife is an art form. He's on to me. You can see him tongue flicking and he's looking straight at me. Yep, he's on to me. He's curling his tail up. He's big enough that I don't represent too much of a problem. He's starting to move away. I'm close enough. I'm getting real close. This is great. Here's the king. Here's the king of the outback. The largest predator out here. It finishes with the go winner. So the first game of the round saw the Rabbitohs absolutely towel up the Broncos. Cody Walker crossed for two tries in five minutes. Adam Reynolds, Kyle Turner, Sam Burgess, Johnny Sutton crossed over, which was eerily predicted by Brent and Josh on BJ on game day. And if this young Tom Dearden starts for the Broncos, he will be playing on that right-hand side, and Johnny Sutton could just have an absolute field day. I don't know what his minutes have been like, but he's probably due for a pie. I don't think he's crossed this year. And Adam Reynolds got seven from seven. Uh, for the Broncos, Corey Oates crossed over and Azako got one from one. In the Supercoach, Cook and Walker top scored for the Rabbitohs. Cook tutting up with 107 and Walker getting 84. McCulloch and Huss top scored for the Broncos with 80 and 59. Great game for a Rabideau supporter this one. Nothing looked like it ever was going to go the Broncos way. Bit disappointing that the Rabideaus at times there seemed to t take their foot off the pedal and not go on with it. But it was 24 nil at half time. Broncos never had a chance. Fantastic win for the Rabideaus. I'm sure their coach Wayne Bennett was, was quite happy to get up over his old club. A lot of talk about the coaches during the week. Still yet to see that solid 80 minute performance from the Rabideaus. Well, that just goes to show how dominant they can be given the right situation. Uh, as mentioned before, everything was just going right for them, even the bounce of the ball. There were some very fortunate bounces of the ball for the Rabbitohs during the, this game. Party-like atmosphere in the crowd as, as it was the GI tribute. So a lot of players crossing over uh, doing the, the trademark Inglis Goanna try celebration. And as I said, just a fantastic game to watch as a South supporter. Great to see the Bunnings charge in. Uh, for the video game, I actually didn't play anything during this match. I was just happy to chill out and watch the game. A little bit tired after having a bit of a late night last night editing the video for the BJ on Game Day show. Uh, but during the week I, I played a little bit of Days Gone, the latest uh, Sony published exclusive on the PS4. Haven't really played enough of it to give it a, a decent review and, and tell you whether it's worth getting or not. Most of the time those, those Sony published exclusives are worth getting. It has hasn't asked me to pay any additional money so that's a that's a welcome change to most other modern games these days so no uh, DLC or microtransactions that I've seen yet but hoping to play a little bit more over the weekend of this one and then get a better idea about it if you're looking for an actual game review Super Mario Bros 3 fantastic all right, first Friday night game, saw the Cowboys get up over the Titans. Granville crossed over, Tormalolo in his return from injury crossed over, Asiata got over, and O'Neill got over at the end there. Jordan Kahu kicked six from six, and for the Titans, Brimson and Proctor both crossed over, and Anthony Don also crossed over because he seems to every game. Taylor kicked one from three, 
In the Supercoach, Tomalolo and Granville topped it for the Cowboys with 88 and 85. And for the Titans, Brimson and Proctor with 97 and 85. This was a shit game. Uh, lots of errors, lots of penalties. Cowboys be very happy that Tormalolo's back. Both sides are going to realise that they're going to have to play better than this if they're going to have a chance against pretty much anyone else. Video game being played during this one was Death Road to Canada, a nice little top-down zombie survival game where you need to manage the resources of a party of people as they attempt to survive a zombie apocalypse and get to Canada. Quite a good, humoured, funny game. There was a time there while I was playing where all of my party died except for a dog where I ended up having to run around as a dog playing for a while on my own. But yeah, if you like your top-down brawlers, I suppose you would call it, uh, mixed with your zombie survival games, definitely check this one out. Next game up was the Sharks vs the Storm, with the Sharks getting up 2018 in the upset of the round. Katoa, Nikora and Ueli all crossed over for the Sharks, with Kyle Flanagan getting 4 from 5. And for the Storm, Adokar, Bromwich and Puppenhusen all crossed for the Storm, with Cameron Smith getting 3 from 5. In the Supercoach, Nikora and Ueli top scored for the Sharks on 62 and 56, and Bromwich and Adokar top scored for the Storm with 73 apiece. Not a whole lot to say about this game. Uh, the Storm played like shit, and the Sharks took advantage of that. As mentioned before, upset of the round, good on the Sharks for backing themselves and getting away with the big win. Game played during this round was Mafia 3 on the PS4, a sort of a Grand Theft Auto style game set in the 1960s. Gameplay can get a little bit samey as you, as you get into the, the meat of the game of taking over rackets and things like that, but overall it's worth a play if you can pick it up cheap enough. I believe it was a PS Plus game not too long ago, so if you PS4 owner with PS Plus you may already have it, and it's got one of the best soundtracks that you'll hear in, in any game classic 1960s soundtrack first game of Super Saturday saw the Raiders take care of the Panthers, 30 points to 12. Oldfield, Whiten, Nickel Klostad and Young all crossed over, with Croker getting 7 from 7. And for the Panthers, Cleary and Tamau crossed over, with Cleary getting 1 from 1, and Maloney getting 1 from 1 also. In Supercoach, Whitehead and Young top scored for the Raiders with 72 and 64, and Tamau and Cleary top scored for the Panthers with 91 and 61. Bit of a rough old game this one with the, the Raiders getting up. Each team copped several injuries, including Bateman for the Raiders, who I believe has a fractured eye socket. So we'll, a lot of uh, super coaches will be waiting with bated breath to see how long he's out for. And I believe the Panthers added a further three people to their injury list. So not looking good for things if you're a Panthers supporter. So thanks to Indie Gamer Chick, two tainment from Badass interesting fucking twitter handle i got the opportunity to play helmet the badass from hell it's an interesting little bullet hell dungeon crawler this one i found it very similar to enter the gungeon in fact i had to sort of look up to see if this was a, a sequel or a prequel to enter the gungeon that i found it very similar as i played through it i got a, a lot more of a, a binding of isaac type feel to it as well so it's a bullet hell dungeon crawler where you can pick up various different mutations and things like that that will give you certain abilities. Each mutation has a, a standard gun and a, a cooldown power. There's also other guns and things like that that you can pick up along the way. Uh, different armors, things like that. Very cool game available on uh, Nintendo Switch is what I played it on, but it's also available through Steam and on Good Old Games. So I'll probably pick this one up on Good Old Games for PC as well. Only complaint I could really have about this game is the music. It, it has an orchestra score and I went into the settings to find that there's an option that you can change from a, a modern soundtrack to an old school soundtrack but the option that was missing and the option that I really would have liked to see is a fucking metal option. This game would be so much more, would be more effective, more atmospheric with a hardcore fucking metal soundtrack. Like your game's called Helmet for fuck's sake, there should be some fucking metal. But apart from that this is a absolutely great 
great game. As mentioned before, pick it up on your Nintendo Switch or on Good Old Games or on Steam. Uh, thanks again to Indie Gamer Chick, Tutainment, and From Badass for the opportunity. Second game on Super Saturday saw the Sea Eagles get up over the Bulldogs. For the Sea Eagles, it was the Ruben Garrick show with, with him scoring all the points for the Sea Eagles. Uh, two tries and kicked five from five. And for the Bulldogs, Smith crossed over for two and Martin got one from two. In Super Coach, Garrick top scored for the Sea Eagles with 113, followed by LG who got 76. And for the Bulldogs, Elliot and Smith top scored with. 81 and 64 respectively. So I didn't get to see a lot of this game but the Seagulls seem to continue on their winning ways performing well without Terry Evans and missing one of their Travojevics. Des Hasler would be very pleased that he got the win up over his old club. The video game I played during this one was Daggerhood for the Nintendo Switch, a, a cheap little title. Uh, one of those Punisher platformers where you die over and over again trying to get the best time on the stage a good little time waster. So third game Super Saturday saw the Roosters absolutely towel up the West Tigers. Latrell Mitchell got a hat trick. Tupu, Kiri, Butcher and Boyd Cordner all got one each. And Latrell kicked seven from eight. For the Tigers, Madison and Farah both crossed over and Masters got two from two. In the Supercoach, Latrell Mitchell had an absolutely massive effort with 158 points with Tupu getting 90, the to top for the Roosters. And on the Tigers side of things, Farah continued his good form with 84 and Madison got 77. Absolutely dominant display by the Roosters in this one, uh, particularly by Latrell Mitchell. Everyone's talking him up about how fantastic he is and the Tigers really didn't have anything to respond to the onslaught that the Roosters threw at them. Game being played during this one was South Park The Fractured But Hold. Great South Park based RPG. If you're a fan of South Park or turn based RPGs both the South Park RPGs are worth picking up. First game of Sunday saw the Warriors go down to the Knights, 18 points to 36. For the Warriors, Herbert crossed over for one, Mamalo crossed over for a double, and Harris Tavita kicked three from three. And for the Knights, Mitchell Pierce crossed over, Sean Kenny Dow got one, Sione Matiuta got over, Hunt got one, and Kalen Ponga got one right near the end. Kalen Ponga kicked eight from nine, and in the super coach, Mamalo and Harris topped for the Warriors with 103 and 71. And Mitchell Pierce and Ponga topped for the Knights with 101 and 86. This game was actually a lot closer throughout most of the game. At one point it was tied up at 18 points. But eventually the Knights were just too strong and ended up running away with it. Both Kalen Ponga and Mitchell Pierce looked good, so that's good news for the Knights. Game being played for this one was the classic beat-em-up River City Rampage on the Nintendo Entertainment System, playing it through the Nintendo Switch's online service. Classic beat-em-up with some RPG elements. Uh, check it out if you're a fan of games like uh, Double Dragon. So the last game of the round saw the Parramatta Eels dispatch the Dragons 32-18. Mahoney crossed over, Gutherson crossed over, Sivo got a double, Blake Ferguson got one, and Mitchell Moses kicked six from seven. For the Dragons, Hunt, Dufty, and Ravalawa all crossed over, and Zach Lomax got three from four. Four. In the super coach, Gutherson and Sivo both top scored for the Parramatta Eels with 99 and 98 as I report on this. And Ravalawa and Norman top scored for the Dragons with 65 and 63. So this match was a little bit like a boxing match. The Eels started off quite energetically in the first 15 minutes, but it was nil all for quite a while. The Dragons then threw a, a couple of jabs and then suddenly the Eels just went bang bang. Couple of big shots with Gutherson and Sivo scoring tries from around the 70 meter mark within the space of around five minutes and put the Dragons on their ass. The, the Eels looked quite comfortable from there and eventually it blew out. Fantastic result for Eels fans there. Gameplay during this one was Mantis Racing on the Nintendo Switch, a top-down racing game. Don't really see a lot of top-down races these days. Good for a quick bash, so it probably suits the
the portability of the Switch a fair bit, so check that one out if you're into your old school style top down races. So to wrap up, we'll see how my team, the Tunnel Snakes, did in their BJ and Game Day League match up against Wayne's Hell's Grannies. And Tunnel Snakes got up 1,226 points to 1,121. So not a bad result there for the Tunnel Snakes. It'll be interesting to see how it goes next week with all the games up at Suncorp Stadium during the Magic Round. That's us, and we rule. Tunnel Snakes rule. Mostly because Tunnel Snakes rule. Don't forget to tune in to BJ on Game Day for analysis and advice by people more qualified than me. I've recently set up the BJ on Game Day group on the Supercoach site. So if you just go join group and type in code 701371 and we'll have that group open for anyone to join and compare scores. And hopefully if we get enough people during the show, there'll be some um, highlights of the BJ on Game Day group. Well, thanks for tuning in and maybe Maybe I'll see you next week. Maybe.